name is Garai Birdie. I'm a chartered professional accountant serving clients located throughout the GTA in Ontario, Canada. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through on how to file a simple T1 personal income tax return yourself. This video is rather an overview for a simple tax situation. You should always remember to consult with a tax professional if your tax situation is more complicated such as involving businesses and real estate properties. Let's get started. Begin by opening your tax software and becoming familiar with its functionality. In this example, we have an individual named John Doe. He has a full-time job at the Sample Company Inc. He's been issued a T4 slip. Notice the box numbers on the slip. He's also received a T5 slip for some interest and dividends that were paid out from a bank. He received a tuition slip for his post-secondary education called a T2202A slip. The next step is to enter the basic information into your tax software. Locate the screen where you can enter your personal details. Since these are the details used by the CRA to identify you, make sure you carefully review them to ensure they're correct. For demonstration purposes, the address and details are all made up. Make sure you select the correct province in which you will be taxed. Once you have entered your basic information into the tax software, you are now ready to begin entering the tax details. Let's start by entering the T4 slip received from his full-time job. Each box number should be matched in the T4 section of the tax software as shown. Double check all the numbers you enter into the tax software. Ensure the box numbers are matched correctly. The insurable earnings is usually calculated automatically by most tax softwares, but be sure they match the tax slip amounts. Next, let's enter the T5 slip received from a bank in Canada where John earned a small dividend and some interest. Locate the T5 slip section in your tax software and match the box numbers as done previously. For dividends, you only need to enter the taxable amount of dividends box number. The other two are automatically calculated in most tax softwares. Next, we will enter the tuition slip received from John's post-secondary institution. Locate the tuition section in your tax software. It may be under T2202A, which is the name of the slip. 
Be careful not to mix up part-time enrollment and full-time enrollment months as it does impact the tax credit calculation. Now that we have entered the tax information, we will review the main federal schedule called Schedule 1. Located in your tax software, review this federal schedule to ensure that any tax credits you were eligible for you did claim. For demonstration purposes, I have only covered the tuition tax credit, but there are many more. The second main schedule is a provincial schedule called ON-428. Review it for tax credits as done previously. Finally, review the T1 jacket. This is the full summary of the tax return and all schedules reference back to this summary. You will notice under the total income, we see the full-time employment income, the dividends received, and interest paid by the bank. If you have other deductions such as RSP contributions, childcare expenses, etc., they will appear in the taxable income section. There is no federal tax owing and the provincial tax is minimal. This is due to the tuition tax credit. As a result, John is receiving a refund. Always use the diagnostics functionality in your tax software to identify any errors you may have made in your return or possible suggestions. Your return is now ready to be electronically filed or paper filed. If you found this video helpful, please leave us a comment and like this video. Don't forget to subscribe for more tax tip videos on the way. You can visit our website at birdie.ca where you can learn more about the services we offer. Thank you for watching.